Please direct your attention to the ground floor for the Nina Community Band.
Please direct your attention to the first floor north for the Indian Community School.
Please direct your attention to Second Floor West Gallery for the Waukesha South Marching Band.
Welcome to the 47th Inauguration Ceremony.
My name is Shannon Holty, and I am honored to be the Masters of Ceremonies for today's inaugural ceremony. I am proud to welcome you to the Wisconsin State Capitol, where we swear in five constitutional officers of the state of Wisconsin, including Wisconsin's 46th governor, Tony Evers. Now, please rise as the national and state colors are presented, and then remain standing for our national anthem and the Pledge of Allegiance. Our color guard is comprised of the members of the Wisconsin Army and Air National Guard, accompanied by the 132nd Army Band of Wisconsin's National Guard. Approximately 10,000 men and women, soldiers and airmen, make up our Wisconsin National Guard. They proudly hail from Rhinelander to Kenosha and from Platteville to Superior, serving Wisconsin and America. Our national anthem will be performed by jo Dr. Jonathan Overby. Immediately following the Pledge of Allegiance will be led by youth leaders from Iglesia La Luz del Mundo.
thanks to the Iglesia La Luz del Mundo for leading us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please be seated. I want to recognize and thank the pre-ceremony performers for their contribution to today's inaugural ceremony. These performers include the Milwaukee Children's Choir, the Nina Community Band, the Indian Community and the member school, and the members of the Waukesha South Marching Band. to thank the Wisconsin's National Guard's 132nd Army Band. A Wisconsin Guard Band has participated in every inaugural ceremony. They are cherished by the state of Wisconsin and we are thankful for their participation yet again in this historic event. Today's inauguration is being broadcast live on PBS Wisconsin and Wisconsin Public Radio. We are also joined by the citizens across the state who are watching the ceremony via live stream on the internet. Thank you to everyone involved in the broadcast and webcast for making this ceremony accessible to every resident in Wisconsin. The invocation now will be given this afternoon by Bishop Lawrence Kirby of St. Paul Missionary Baptist Church in Racine. Please welcome Bishop Kirby. Let us pray. Eternal God, you who are God from everlasting to everlasting. You are creator, you are father, you are the beginning, and you are the end. We pray today, we ask your blessings upon Governor Tony Evers. It is our prayer that you give him the wisdom of Solomon, the courage of David, the compassion of Jesus to lead this great state and these humble people. We pray for his family. We ask that you protect and sustain them during his tenure. We give thanks to you for their sacrifice as they have chosen to share him with us. We are thankful for you. We are thankful for you that we live in a country where we can have free and fair elections. We pray that all elected and appointed officers of this great state will be guided to do work justly and to walk humbly before the people. We pray that each and every person realize that we are our brothers and sisters keeper and that out of one blood create you all people to dwell on the face of the earth. Give them, we pray, the mind of the Good Samaritan that they, may not, that they may not pass people up, but lift people up. And we pray this prayer in the marvelous, magnificent, wonderful, and majestic name of our Master. And amen, amen, and amen. Thank you, Bishop Kirby.
It is an honor for me to introduce and welcome four former, former governors of the state of Wisconsin who we are honored to have with us today. Governor Martin Schreiber. <laughs> Governor, Governor Tommy Thompson. <laughs> Governor Scott McCollum. and Governor Jim Doyle. Thank you for being here and for your service to the state of Wisconsin. I would like to now recognize two public servants who are leaving office today. Sarah Goldlowski has served as Wisconsin's state treasurer since January of 2019 and Medella Barnes has served Wisconsin as Lieutenant Governor since January of Thank you for your service to Wisconsin. Wisconsin's sixth constitutional officer is the State Superintendent of Public Instru Instruction. Please join me in recognizing State Superintendent Jill Underly. It is my pleasure to recognize and introduce the Justices of Wisconsin Supreme Court who are with us today. Chief Justice Annette Ziegler. <laughs> Justice Patience Rogensack. <laughs> Justice Rebecca Bradley. <laughs> Justice Rebecca Dallet. and Justice Brian Hagdorn. And Justice Jill Karofsky. Thank you for your service to our courts and to our state. The new leaders of Wisconsin State Legislature are also here with us today. From the State Senate, we are pleased to have Majority Leader Devin Lumahu, Sorry, and Senate President Chris Kapna and Minority Lead, Lead, Leader Melissa Agard from the Wisconsin Assembly. We are joined from the Wisconsin Assembly. We are joined by Speaker Robin Voss, Majority Leader Tyler August, and Minority Leader Greta Neubauer. Thank you for taking part in, to, in the ceremony today. Good afternoon, my name is Shannon Holsey. I am the president of the Stockbridge Muncie Community, president of the Great Lakes Intertribal Council, and treasurer of the National Congress of American Indians. However, much like everyone here we celebrate today, my most cherished title is that of public servant. Today is not only a celebration of democracy, but also represents a time of transition or changing of season. December's new moon, or the winter solstice, was the first official day of winter. Its spiritual energy asks us to look inward and spend time on our personal reflection. With that in mind, this is a beautiful time to look back, reflect upon our achievements, and use what we've learned to shape our plans for the future. Leadership is not about a title or a designation. It is about impact, influence, and inspiration. One of the most valuable lessons Governor Evers taught me was, love is wise and hatred is foolish. In this world, which is getting more closely interconnected, we have to learn to tolerate each other. We have to learn to put up with the fact that some people say things that we don't like. We can only live together in that way. 
But if we are to live together and not die together, we must learn a kind of charity and a kind of tolerance which is absolutely vital to the continuation of human life on this planet and to meet the needs of Wisconsin. Today, we honor our leadership and celebrate the rich diversity of all of Wisconsin. Hundreds of thousands of Wisconsin citizens are coming together today in person and virtually to celebrate our democracy, to lift each other up, to change the culture of how we move forward together, and to find equal footing on the state of union by unifying around those issues that affect everyone. When we look around and see all of us instead of some of us, and when we question the inequity and we are appalled by the reality of a ruling class that, not, that, that just denies equality but universal freedoms. We have the ability for all human beings to live free, equal, housed, nourished, and have access to rudimentary needs like affordable health care. When people can be seen and heard, remarkable things happen. United like never before, we must collectively rise together, arm in arm, to equip all communities with the tools needed to become architects of our future. We need to think differently about how we approach things and what, we, and what that looks like for our diverse communities. It is undeniable that our current system and systematic barriers are challenging for many communities. We must divest from the idea that our citizens are monolithic and our life challenges are singular. We must continue to forge a better union and have robust conversations that prioritize and invest in all of these efforts that offer solutions. Today, we're standing up as leaders within our spaces saying there's a different way to look at our world and our impact on those we serve, and there's lots of opportunities here. As we transition into another season and its solstice, I'm reminded that after the longest night in December, that the day after we sang up the dawn, there is a rejoicing that even in the darkest time, the sun is not vanquished. Nature gives every time and every season unique beauty, from morning to night, as from the cradle to the grave, it's just a succession of change, so soft and comfortable that we hardly notice the progression. And while the gentle winter slowly opens its eyes, let us all bring more light and compassion into the world. My profound prayers and highest regards for the journey ahead, Anisha. Now, it is time to inaugurate the constitutional officers of Wisconsin who have been properly and legally chosen for their offices. Chief Justice Annette Ziegler will now administer the oaths of office. Chief Justice. Greetings on behalf of the entire Wisconsin Supreme Court and the judiciary of the state of Wisconsin. It is really an honor and a privilege to be here with you today and to be the one to be able to administer the oaths to your constitutional officers. And with that, we'll get on to the business at hand, first with the state treasurer. Having been duly elected as state treasurer, are you prepared to take the oath? Yes. Please repeat after me. I state your name. I, John Liber. Swear that I will support. Swear that I will support. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. And the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. And will faithfully and impartially. And will faithfully and impartially. Discharge the duties of said office discharge the duties of said office to the best of my ability to the best of my ability so help me god so help me god congratulations i am honored to be here today thank you to all my friends and family for their support and hard work that got me here and thank you to the people of wisconsin 
who I will serve for the next four years in the role of state treasurer. This year marks the 175th anniversary of Wisconsin's admission to the Union. Thank you all the, who participated in our great tradition of democracy by voting. While it's true this inauguration is the beginning of our term, it's really a continuation of a long history of the peaceful transfer of power, which is remarkable because of how smooth and unremarkable it's become. Some who serve in this building have been here a while, and others, like me, are starting their first term. One thing we all have in common is that all of us taking the oath of office today work for all of you, and we will do our best to serve Wisconsin well. We aren't going to agree on everything, naturally, but that's the way it's supposed to be. It's healthy to discuss and debate with each other about the future of our state and the, and the best ways to get there. I believe that when we put the interest of the people of Wisconsin first, we'll make the right decisions. We need to work together in this divided government to accomplish something, and I look forward to getting things done. I, now, I ran on a platform of small government focusing on the duties of this office. I hope to make a positive difference in our state over my term. I plan to keep the office accessible to people, address financial concerns, and educate Wisconsinites on fiscal responsibility including the state's role with your tax dollars. 36 state treasurers have come before me, and it's an honor to be part of this tradition of service. The duties of the treasurer have changed over the last few decades, and they may change again in the future. Whatever the future holds, I remain committed to performing the duties of, this, of the treasurer well for the people of Wisconsin. I'm humbled by the opportunity to serve you, and I can't wait to get started. Thank you. Madam Chief. Madam Chief Justice, I have the honor of presenting the Honorable Douglas LaFollette, who has been elected to the office of the Secretary of State, and now who wishes to take the oath of office. Thank you, President Holsey. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I, Doug Lafala. Swear that I will support. Swear that I will support. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. And the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. And will faithfully and impartially. And will faithfully and impartially. Discharge the duties of said office. Discharge the duties of my office. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. So help me God. Congratulations. I'm honored once again to be sworn in as your Secretary of State. I want to extend heartfelt congratulations to Governor Evers and the other people who are being sworn in during this ceremony. It will be a pleasure and an honor to work with all of you during this term. I would also like to thank you who voted in this participated democracy of our election, and to the poll workers, the volunteers, the campaign staff, and the people who gave so much of their time and energy in this election cycle. This work continues to ensure the function of our democracy in Wisconsin. Without this, this election would not have been a success. I look forward to continuing my hard work in the Office of Secretary of State, holding the line for democracy and supporting my staff, serving the public in any way needed. This election came at a tough time for Americans and for Wisconsinites. We've had several rough years, but the model of Wisconsin that we've embraced and we will continue to hold is forward. I know that despite the hiccups in the past, we can work together to continue to serve the people of Wisconsin, allocating the resources and funding where they are most needed to ensure the continued success of every agency and every citizen of our great state. I'm hoping that the legislature will adopt the governor's recommendation 
that we be given the two additional staff in the office to keep up with the demand for service. Otherwise, we cannot provide that for people. As always, I'm here for you if you need me. And thank you again. I am truly honored to be elected your Secretary of State. Madam Chief Justice, I have the honor of presenting the Honorable Josh Call, who has been elected to the office of the Wisconsin Attorney General and who, and who wishes to take the oath of office. All right, raise your hand and repeat after me, please. I state your name. I, Joshua Call. Swear that I will support. Swear that I will support. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. And the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. And will faithfully and impartially. And will faithfully and impartially. Discharge the duties of said office. Discharge the duties of said office. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Um, thank you. Thank you all so much. Thank you to my family, to those in attendance today, and to all Wisconsinites. I could not be prouder to serve as your Attorney General, standing up for the people of this great state. Wisconsinites are makers, innovators, builders, problem solvers. We care about our families, our friends, and our communities. Wisconsin is a place where people know how to roll up their sleeves and get things done. It's a place where people live the values we teach our kids. There's nowhere that Lindsay and I would rather be raising our boys than here in Wisconsin. Now, four years ago, we gathered in this incredible rotunda and marked a change of direction for our state. Nobody could have imagined then what lay ahead. But as challenges arose, we persevered. Our democracy held. Together, we kept our state moving forward. Now some, <laughs> some have described Wisconsin as divided, polarized. But let's not mistake close elections for polarization. Let's not confuse divided government with a divided state. Because the reality is that there is so much that unites us and that provides a solid foundation for progress. In rural, suburban, and urban communities, in our biggest cities and small towns alike, Wisconsinites want their families to be safe from crime. They want their kids to go to good schools. They want to be safe drinking the water from the tap. They want health care to be accessible and affordable. And don't want our freedoms to be taken away. Now, over the course of our history, Wisconsin has been a leader. And it is time for us to lead the way again. In the shadow of a pandemic and an insurrection, we can light a new path. We can reject divide and conquer politics and commit to finding common ground for the common good of Wisconsinites. We can set the standard on public safety and invest a portion of our historic surplus in local government, which funds local law enforcement, our Department of Justice, and other critical parts of the criminal justice system. Now, no doubt, we will face more unexpected challenges over the next four years. But by working together for the best interests of the people of Wisconsin, we can make our communities safer. We can not only protect our democracy, 
but strengthen it. We can help build a stronger future for all Wisconsinites. So let's build upon the common ground we share. Let's show what we can achieve when we unite to make progress. And let's ensure that this great state continues moving forward. Thank you all, and I look forward to working with you in the years ahead. Madam Chief Justice, I have the honor of presenting the Honorable Sarah Rodriguez, who has been elected to the office of Lieutenant Governor of Wisconsin and who now wishes to take the oath of office. Make sure everyone gets in their places, no problem. All right, please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I, Sarah Rodriguez, swear that I will support, swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin, and the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin, and that I will faithfully and impartially, and that I will faithfully and impartially discharge the duties of said office, discharge the duties of said office to the best of my ability, to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Good afternoon, Wisconsin. I am humbled, honored, and just thrilled to be standing here today as the 46th Lieutenant Governor of the great state of Wisconsin. This this is an immense responsibility, and I know I have big shoes to fill. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor Barnes, for your leadership and your service. I want to begin today with some gratitude. First and foremost, to my family, my husband, Baltazar, and my children, Nicholas and Sophia, Thank you for your love and support each step of the way, and especially now as we head into this new, exciting, albeit chaotic, chapter of our life. Gracias por su apoyo y su paciencia. Los amo. Also, to my mother, who taught me that service to community was a basic expectation of anyone living under her roof. To my brother and sister-in-law, who are raising three amazing children, my brother-in-law, who has shown me what strength looks like in raising his two children after my sister passed away. And to my uncle, a lifelong farmer, who drove hours to be here to support me today. Thank you all. Thank you to the amazing team of staff and volunteers who put their hearts into making today possible, and to my friends and colleagues who showed up to offer what they could. I am so grateful for your support. We did this together, and I am so incredibly proud. And to my running mate, our governor, Tony Evers, thank you, Tony. I look forward to continuing to work together to do the right thing for the people of our state. And last, but certainly not least, to the Wisconsinites who showed up 
turned out and used their vote and their voice to protect democracy, to defend basic human and civil rights, and to show that there is far, far more that unites us than divides us. Thank you. I will strive every day to make you proud of your state. Over the last year, I had the pleasure of traveling all over our great state to meet folks and their families and their homes and businesses, to hear about their lives and their challenges, and I had the chance to share a little bit about my own story, too. I am a born and raised Wisconsinite from Waukesha County. I'm the granddaughter of dairy farmers. I'm the proud daughter of a working class family. My father was a Vietnam veteran who fixed telephones for Wisconsin Bell. And my mother was a proud union member as a teaching assistant for children with special needs. I'm now a mom of two teenagers, 13 and 16. And yes, there is some eye rolling and some sighing in my house. And they're so very, very embarrassed that I'm talking about them right now. I'm a nurse and public health professional who worked for more than 20 years answering calls at all times of the night, on the weekends, over the holidays, you name it, to take care of my patients, friends, and neighbors. So the lesson I learned from my conversations with Wisconsinites who I met out on the road won't surprise you. We aren't all that different. Every family like mine wants to earn a good living, to have access to quality, affordable health care, and to send their kids to good schools and maybe even help them save a little for college. Yes, even if there's an eye roll or two along the way. And so as we move forward, every family wants to be healthy. As a clinician, I know that the medicine we give you, the procedures that we do, it is such a tiny fraction of how healthy we are. It is about where we live, the air we breathe, the water we drink, and if we've got a good paying job to put food on the table and to actually pay for those medications. So what I know for sure is this. Quality, affordable health care doesn't just save lives. It's good for our economy and a family budget. Every family knows that fully funding our public schools is an investment in our kids and our future. And that investing in affordable childcare and early education, maternal and infant health, and paid family leave ensure our families succeed. We want to reduce gun violence with common sense gun safety reform. communities for kids to play in, clean water to drink, and to know that we're leaving our kids with a better world than the one we inherited. And yes, as a nurse, as a mother, we believe that reproductive health care is health care, and that every person Every person should have the right to make their own reproductive health care decisions without interference from elected officials who know nothing about their faith, their family, or their circumstances.
and that building greener, more sustainable infrastructure will create family supporting jobs and strengthen our economy, all while delivering on the promise to leave future generations that come after us with a better planet. I ran for the State Assembly and then to be your Lieutenant Governor because these were the issues that were heavy on my mind as a mother, as a small business owner, as a health care provider, and as a Wisconsinite. And over the past several months, we saw it everywhere we went. Wisconsinites are strong, resilient, and ready for the bold, urgent solutions Governor Evers and I have been fighting for to address the challenges we face. Solutions that won't change who we are as a state, but instead ensure our state can be all we've set out to be. There isn't a one-size-fits-all solution to our challenges. It's going to take all of us working together, bringing our ideas to the table and connecting the dots to build the sort of future we want for our state. And all of those things that unite us will continue to be our focus for these next four years. Finding common ground, working across the aisle, and always trying to do the right thing for Wisconsin and the people of our state. It's what Governor Evers has been doing over the past four years, and it's what we're going to do to continue to keep Wisconsin moving forward together. We've got a lot of work ahead but I promise to always answer the call, and I meant it. I could not be prouder or more humbled to be a part of that building that future as your Lieutenant Governor. Thank you. Madam Chief Justice, it is my great and profound honor to present the Honorable Tony Evers, who has been elected to the office of the Governor of Wisconsin and now wishes to take the oath of office. Please repeat after me. I state your name. I, Tony Evers. Swear that I will support. Swear that I will support. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. And the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. And I will faithfully and impartially. And I will faithfully and impartially. Discharge the duties of said office. Discharge the duties of said office to the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Thank you all so much for being here. And thank you to our fantastic ASL interpreters who have been with us for this ceremony. I'd like to especially thank Tony Evers and his team for allowing me to introduce him today and confirming my suspicions that I'm his favorite grandchild. <laughs> My name is Tessa Schoeniker, and I've had the honor of knowing Tony well before he was governor, when he was just a grandparent to me and my siblings. It definitely changes your view on politics when you've seen the governor get destroyed in cornhole by your brother. 
But more than that, having my family be so closely linked to Wisconsin politics has really impressed upon me the importance of people in our policy and taking an active role in our democracy. We saw this so clearly in this past election with incredibly high youth voter turnout across the state. Young people in Wisconsin, or like myself, voting absentee from college, knew that we could be a decisive factor and knew that we had to show up. The issues on the table this year were huge, and I know many of us were motivated to not only vote ourselves, but convince those around us to vote, and together we made it happen. Critical issues like reproductive health care and climate change were on the ballot, and with our work, we were able to elect a candidate who's committed to making our, safe, our state better and safer for everyone. I'm so proud that this candidate was my grandfather. Not to mention extreme, extremely relieved because I was scared I'd lose my D-list celebrity status if we lost. <laughs> This year was my first being able to vote for him, and it was so meaningful seeing his name on the ballot. I don't know quite how to say this, but it really made me understand that no matter who the governor is, they're just some person. The name on the ballot is the guy who wears his Wisconsin State Fair cream puffs hat too much and gets really into family pickleball tournaments. Our leaders work for us. And it's our responsibility to remember that they're just people and make our voices heard on the issues that are important to us. For most people, it's a little harder than just texting your grandpa, but it's necessary nonetheless. I'm so hopeful for the future of our state and so excited for the possibilities of what we could achieve together. Over the next four years, I know that we can create a better Wisconsin for women, workers, people of color, and the LGBTQ community. And I'm so happy that my grandfather will be there with us. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. What a granddaughter. Thank you, Tessa, and thank you, Shannon, for, uh, for your work today also. So thank you so much. <laughs> Honorable Supreme Court Justices, Constitutional Officers, Major General Knapp, members of the Wisconsin National Guard, and active and retired members of our armed forces. Cabinet members, Senate President Kapenga, Majority Leader Lemihu, Minority Leader Agar, Speaker Voss, and Minority Leader Neubauer, legislators, distinguished guests, and most importantly, Wisconsinites from near, far, and those watching from home, Welcome, and thanks for joining us. I want to begin by congratulating the folks behind me who also took their oaths of office today. I look forward to serving together with you these next few years. Thank you for being here today. I also want to recognize constitutional officers who are leaving office today. State Treasurer Sierra Godlewski and Lieutenant Governor Mandela Barnes, thank you both for bringing your energy, your wit, and your passion to our work together over the past four years. Thank you. I'm Tony Evers, and yes, I am jazzed as hell to be sworn in again as a 46th governor of the great state of Wisconsin. So 
Thank you. Jazz as hell. As jazz as I am today, I'm also humble. I'm standing here as a born and raised Wisconsinite who grew up as a scrawny kid with glasses, raising cane in Plymouth, who, as I was painting fences in Sheboygan County, wouldn't have predicted that this is where I'd end up, who had no idea I'd marry my high school sweetheart, Kathy, and spend the next 50 years loving her and raising three kids and nine grandkids together. who never dreamed I'd be taking an oath of office to be governor of, the great, of this great state that made me who I am, much less that I'd have the opportunity to do it twice. So I am humbled. And just as I did four years ago, I stand here today with a grateful heart for your trust, for your faith, and for your confidence Thank you so much, folks. I appreciate it. <laughs> to take the oath as governor, an oath only 45 people have taken before me, is an extraordinary privilege. And not just because a so-called boring former science teacher managed to end up here, but because each time this oath is taken, it's a, found, it's a profound display of our democracy one much like the fundamental right to cast a ballot, like the right to have fair and secure elections free from interference by politicians, like the fidelity to each other to willfully return borrowed power when it's no longer ours to bear, and much like the responsibility to serve with the grace and humility of recognizing not one of us alone can accomplish all we aim to achieve on our own. Today represents, today represents a defining feature and an extraordinary expression of what makes our state and our country great, that the functions of democracy are derived not from any one person, any one office, or any one party, but from all of us together. And today is an extraordinary reminder that these functions exist because they are manifested by our collective ability to will them to continue. And together on November 8th, that's exactly what Wisconsinites chose to do. <laughs> this past November, Wisconsin rejected a, traje a trajectory bent towards permanently undermining the tenets and institutions that are fundamental to who we are as a people. Wisconsin rejected a rhetoric born out of apathy and animosity towards our neighbor. And Wisconsin rejected a return to the bitter politics of res uh, resentment. Given the opportunity to abandon the virtues that define us, Wisconsinites chose to embrace a better history. Given the opportunity to retreat into division and doubt, Wisconsin chose a future of unity and faith. Given the opportunity to further enable cynicism and hate, Wisconsinites chose kindness, and they chose hope instead. People voted because they believe, as I do, that we should fully fund our public schools, keep class sizes small, invest in kids' mental health, and retain and build upon our talented education workforce because they know that when we do what we when we do what's best for our kids we do what's best for our state people voted especially our young people and you heard it from my granddaughter because they believe as I do, that science is real, that climate change is real, and they are demanding that we stop pretending that we can't create good paying jobs and build sustainable infrastructure while conserving our natural resources because they deserve a future where we can do both.
People voted because they believe, as I do, that when we deliver tax relief, it should be targeted to the middle class to give working families a little breathing room in their family budget, not to give big breaks to millionaires and billionaires who don't need the extra help to afford rising costs. People voted because they believe, as I do, that we should expand Badger Care and work to ensure everyone has access to quality, affordable health care because it's 2023 and they believe we shouldn't be beholden to a law from the 1800s passed well before women had the right to vote. because they believe people should have the freedom to make their own reproductive health decisions without needing permission from politicians. Thank you. Thank you. Hello down there. Now, I'm not naive enough to believe that 100% of the people who cast their ballot in November agree with me on every issue. That's probably a bit generous. Depending on the issue, it's probably closer to, I hope, 60, 70, 80% or so, based on the latest Marquette poll. <laughs> but I also know that not everyone who voted this past November agrees with me on all, all the time or belongs to the same party as I do, or shares the same core values and beliefs. I know there are those who chose to cast their ballot this past November, feeling the weight of a Republican a republic on the brink. And Wisconsinites of every background, identity, and creed went into that ballot box believing that together we could correct that course, and on November 8th, they might have cast their ballot for me but they cast their ballot for democracy, too. And in doing so, Wisconsinites reaffirm that our duty and allegiance, first and foremost, is not to our own interests, but to each other, resolved to the common good that binds us, vehement about the values that unite us, and steadfast to the ideals that transcend us. So we, we are here today to take an oath to support the constitutions of our country and our state, promising to faithfully discharge our duties to the best of our abilities. We have work ahead of us to not only protect these basic functions, but to forge forward together. And that hard work begins here today. Not one of us alone can undo the damage that's been caused to our democracy. Not one of us alone can mend the seams of this fraying fabric. Not one of us alone can restore trust in a system that has served our country for centuries. But together, we can, and together, we will. No one person alone can retain or recruit all the educators we need to keep our class sizes small or get each of our kids the support they need to get caught up after a pandemic or to fully fund our schools so that they have the resources to improve outcomes and prepare our kids for the future. But together, we will. We need generational transformative improvements as, we, as, as to how we invest in our local communities and keep them safe and to ensure they can respond to basic and unique needs alike. So let's keep working together on a plan because while one person alone cannot right the disinvestment local communities have seen over the last decade, together we will.
We all know the challenges that have plagued our state's workforce for a decade. Wisconsin must be able to compete to bring more talented workers to our state, most especially to address our health care workforce shortage. So we have to keep investing in good roads and infrastructure, good schools and good health care, and together we will. But we also have to expand access to affordable housing in our rural areas and urban areas alike. We must expand job training and apprenticeship programs and innovative industries and technologies. We must invest in public transit and transportation alternatives. Together, we will. And and if we want to make sure we can compete for talented workers and businesses against other states, then we ought to start by making sure that when workers and businesses look to relocate to Wisconsin, part of that calculus doesn't include themselves, their loved ones, or their workers being stripped of their reproductive freedom just for moving here. We must, we must restore the freedoms that Wisconsinites have had until June 23rd, 2022, the day before the U.S. Supreme Court overrode Roe v. Wade, and I believe that together we will. We must ensure that every Wisconsinite has access to clean, safe water, no matter whether it's for drinking, in our homes and schools, for our crops or livestock, or our natural, natural waters for hunting, fishing, and outdoor recreation. And that means urgently addressing PFAS and lead and nitrates and getting those contaminants out of our water. Together we will. And we also know that we do not close, if we do not close that digital divide, Wisconsinites will be left behind. So we must ensure that every kid, every family, every business, and every hospital can get connected to affordable, reliable, high-speed internet. Together, we will do that. And yes, we must make quality child care and early childhood education more affordable and accessible. Yes, we must lower the cost of medication and cap the cost of insulin. Yes, we must have a meaningful conversation about treating marijuana, much like we do alcohol, but we can't do it alone. Together, we will. Folks, our state and our country's histories are punctuated by moments just like this one, moments where we have the chance to do the right thing, not for ourselves, but for each other. There's no question that the work we must do to build the future we want for our kids or our grandkids or our state is only possible if we're willing to do it together, and I believe that together we will Wisconsin, we love you. Let's polka tonight and get to work tomorrow. Thank you, and on Wisconsin. folks. <laughs>